this kind of gets into the jiu-jitsu as a gentle art argument, right? Um, a lot of people assume that since it's a gentle art, <coughs> that the... A lot of people assume that since it's a gentle art, it's uh, not forceful. You know, like, gentle is... They have examples of, like, people assume it's things like... Uh, uh, like sauce or something like a like a like a, a light foot sweep that you don't even feel happening and then it happens or like whatever you know fucking a tomanagi like shit like that like uh things that feel like their momentum got used against them or things you know um so they they don't they don't associate the idea of this crushing pressure with the gentle art right the problem is i don't think of gentle as the idea of gentle soft I think of gentle, the gentle art as the idea of not insisting that one thing happen, right? Because when I put pressure, it's like if there's a fucking, if there's a gorilla in that room and I want the gorilla to go out a door, I can't fucking make that gorilla go out the door. There's no way I can just physically grab the gorilla and push him out the door. But if I can bang some pots and pans together over here, I can make him go that way. And if I bang some more pots and pans over here, I'll make him go this way until eventually he's out of the fucking door. So I didn't use force to make him go out the door, but I created situations that caused him pressure to make the decision to go out the door. Do you know what I mean? So it's like when I use pressure with somebody, I'm not trying to make them die from what I'm doing. I'm trying to make them make a decision that is good for me. You know, so if he tries to turn left and I don't like it, I apply a lot of pressure. And so when he turns right, I remove some of the pressure so his brain, like when you're playing hot or colder as a kid, like warm, warm, cold, warm, warm, cold, his brain starts going, this must be the way to go because it's the way that gets me out of the most pressure. You know what I mean? You got to push pause. So anyway, uh, the idea with that is to try to affect them with pressure. I'm not putting, I mean, it seems like I'm putting pressure to just make people die, but I'm trying to affect their, their, their thinking. I'm trying to either affect their decisions or affect their mentality, you know, because it's kind of like, it's kind of like uh, a little bit of weight, you know, if somebody's jogging and somebody else is jogging carrying a five pound dumbbell, that's not much, but give them a hundred miles and that five pounds is going to fucking matter drastically. So if I can make somebody's role, if I can make somebody's experience just suck a little bit, even if it's not debilitating, it's accumulating, like suffering is accumulating. And then that starts to affect their decisions, and that starts to affect the way that they perform and how they think when they're when they're training. You know, so the benefits of that from the from the controlling the person applying the pressure's position is that you learn to use pressure as a strategy, not just as a tool. Like pressure, it sucks, ah, but you learn to use it as a strategy, like as a psychological strategy. And from the bottom person's position, it's really important because you learn to get accustomed to pressure, you know? Because I tell you, guys that train with me, they go to a tournament, they go to a fight, and somebody puts pressure on them, and they literally look like they're going to laugh, you know? I mean, I've seen guys, Paul's at a tournament one time, and this guy was just making people visibly suffer, and this dude put pressure on Paul, and he, like, had the look on his face, like, like, that's going to get the result that I want, like, yeah, and Paul literally went like this, like, underneath him, just went, you know? And the guy weighed like 70, 80 pounds more than him, you know? So it's like, if you get accustomed to the pressure that I put on you, and you can make decisions and think clearly through that pressure, then it's going to make it where when somebody outside is intentionally or not applying pressure, your brain's going to be able to function through that. So it's super valuable. I think from both people's perspective, to be able to use it as a tool and to be able to, to tolerate it as a strategy, I think are both really important, you know? But that's why I put a lot more pressure than most people, you know? Well, not even more, just thinking about it affecting them psychologically, not just physically. Because most people, when they put pressure, they want to affect your body, and I don't care about your body. Tough guys' bodies don't give a shit. But if you can break their heart, if you can weigh on their mind, if you can subtly affect their decisions, then you can fuck with them, you know? Is that... Do you need longer? Do you need more? No. Is that good? What about the uh, average Joe that isn't uh, an athlete or uh, anything? The, 
the day-to-day -day guy was this benefit? Yeah. Get Dude. Just, uh, other because of course, yes, using using other techniques to distract him to get your way is is awesome. But what about uh, jamming their face into the mat or your shoulder into them? I mean, this, this is the deal. Like, like any avenue for personal development insists that you learn to tolerate pressure. Whether it's psychological pressure, physical. Like if you want to be a weightlifter, it's physical pressure. If you want to be a marathoner, it's physical pressure. If you want to be a fucking entrepreneur, it's mental pressure because you got to wake up every day and fucking do your shit. You know, if you want to be a painter, it's the pressure of like not getting that painting fucking good enough, you know what I mean? Any any avenue of excellence is going to require that you be able to endure pressure. So there's a Buddhist saying that says, suffering, I'm not sure if I'm going to say it right, but suffering is not your circumstances. Suffering is wanting your circumstances to be different. So like when you feel pressure, if you're the kind of person that accepts this, and it's like, this just is what it is. It's like somebody that's never had to work hard. They wake up and they work hard. I mean, uh, somebody that like works hard for a living, they wake up and work hard. Some kid that's never had a real job has to wake up and do that job. It's not the job that sucks. One guy's accepted it and is putting it out there, and the other guy hasn't accepted it, and the whole day is like, dude, it sucks, you know? He wants the circumstances to be different than they are. So if you can learn physically how to endure suffering and learn how to function through a situation without obsessing about wishing it was different. You know what I mean? Like that's a huge life skill. If I can give if I can give somebody one skill to make them better at fighting, better at self defense, better at life in general, to be a better husband, to be a better father, to be a better fucking human being. Do you know what I mean? It would be how do you suffer? Like that's the test of character. How do you suffer? You know what I mean? So like, man, people want life improvement. People want to become better than they are. Not just in jiu-jitsu, but man, if you can increase your capacity for suffering, you can become great at something. Like the ability to suffer and continue to push forward is the only characteristic that matters. It's the characteristic that makes everything else possible. If somebody's like, I will not, why? Well, if that only exists until it's a little bit difficult, then they're fucking lying. You know what I mean? If somebody goes, I would never sell you out. But if you make them 5% worse than their... You know what I mean? They're like, oh, I'll sell you. Like, any good trait, any, any trait that you have that is good is only good to the degree that it exists while you're suffering. So if all you have to do is apply a little heat, apply a little pressure, and people will sell out their values, then what the fuck are they? You know what I mean? So it's like... To be a good human being, you have to be able to suffer well. And uh, I apply a lot of life lessons in that regard. You know what I mean? Anybody that trains with me for a while becomes very good at suffering, you know? And moving forward. Not just like suck it up, but like suffering with a straight face while you act. That makes you a better fighter, but it makes you a better person. It's probably more important than your skill, you know? Good answer, I like that.